Hello. In this video, we will learn about how to find the magnitude of a vector and what it is useful for. In our discussion about vectors, we have always had access to information about the x and y components of the vectors. That's great, but we will often find that it is crucial to know the length of a vector, which represents its magnitude. For instance, you can tell me that my destination is 3 miles east and 10 miles north of where I am. But what if I want to know the distance it is from me if I take a straight path? Or, if I'm driving, it wouldn't be very helpful if my speedometer said that I was going 40 miles an hour in the eastward direction and 30 miles an hour in the northward direction. Am I above the 55 mile an hour speed limit or not? We can figure this out with geometry. A vector is always a right triangle with legs that are the x and y components and whose hypotenuse is the magnitude of the vector. You may have heard of the Pythagorean theorem, which states that c squared equals a squared plus b squared, where c is the hypotenuse and a and b are the other two legs. We can solve for the hypotenuse by just taking the square root of everything. This is the relationship that we will use to determine the magnitude of the vector, since the magnitude is the hypotenuse of the vector triangle. Therefore, we can write this equation that v vector with the double bars surrounding it is one way that the magnitude of a vector is typically written. Sometimes though that is too much effort and you'll also see it written with single bars even though that looks the same as an absolute value sign. And sometimes even that is too much effort for some people so you'll see a vector magnitude written like this without an arrow over it and not in bold font to indicate that it is the magnitude of the vector v. In case you are concerned if we calculate the vector magnitude here we see that I'm only driving at 50 miles an hour, so I won't get pulled over. That's it. Thanks for watching.